I'm Ambassador Bridget Motsepe and uh, my role as the Goodwill Ambassador actually for the Pan-African Parliament is for economic development and entrepreneurship in Africa. And as you know, the Pan-African Parliament's motion and vision and focus is economic integration. You know, I was very happy that I was able to come here and observe what's happening. This is the first time that the Pan-African Parliament is having this kind of meeting. This is like a due diligence to see where we're coming from. What, is, what are our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats of the African Union Parliament? The African Union, as you know, was created for political liberation. But economically, we are not liberated. For as long as the basic human rights of the people where we come from in the African continent, food, clothing, shelter, is not being adhered to, attended and solved, then we, have, we, we haven't done what we need to do in terms of the economic emancipation of the continent's people. So I was happy when I saw in the Audit Committee, in the Trade and Industry Committee, in the Rural Development Committee, Environment Committee, that they echoed the sentiments of the fact that we need to have also mining. The gross domestic products of many countries in Africa, the bulk of it comes from mining. But we don't have a mining committee, which is important. And I speak here as, very, as the person who is very passionate about the mining industry. 36 years ago, I became the first black person in South Africa to build mines. So you give me a piece of land anywhere in the world, and I'll build a mine. Now, when you build a mine, you go to a rural area, or just an area where there's nothing. There are, there are no, there's no infrastructure, there's no electricity, there are no roads, there are no clinics, there are no schools, there are no suburbs, there's not an airport. It's just bare land. But as soon as you build a mine, all those areas then becomes very needed. And then you create a little town that creates a South Africa, Johannesburg. It, look at what Johannesburg is. It's a mining town. They started just from, from nothing. And if we are not going to have that mining division, we will continue being the producer of the raw ore being the people of South Africa, of the African continent, that will export the manganese, iron ore, lithium, whatever ore that we have, gold, platinum, that we have. And then we import the, 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 the final product. We should be manufacturing all the goods here. So these are the things that we need to really look into. Why are we not manufacturing the goods here? Why are we importing everything, the bulk of the goods from China, from India, when we are the producers of the raw products? Why? Because our laws, many of the laws, do not actually have rules that, 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 that require that. So what we did in South Africa is that when we created the mining legislation, it was very important to realize that the mineral rights belongs to the country in line with international practice. When we became the new South Africa, 83% of the resources and reserves of the country were owned by four companies. So it was very important that the state had to become the custodian of mineral rights in line with international practice. So the states come and say, I'll give you a mining permit and I'll give you the right to mine. And whatever it is that you've, that you've developed on surface belongs to you. But the mineral that comes out of the underground is mine. You will then lease it from me. But who am I? I am that manufacturer or no, that producer of minerals that goes to the rural area. The surface rights owners in those rural areas are the rural communities. Are they getting royalties for building the mine? No, it never happened. Because if those rural communities were getting royalties 
for building a mine because they are the surface rights owner. Or they might be the mineral, they might be the, the, at that time, they were also owning the mineral rights and they were not giving royalties. They would have had been able to build the roads, the clinics, the bursaries, the dams for themselves, not just looking at the, bank, at the, at the government to give that. You know, I think we must look at who we are and we must embrace the fact that the Black Lives Matter. And in so doing, we must embrace the fact that we are in a continent of Africa where we cannot just think about ourselves without also bringing on board those around us. Where are the compassionate capitalists? It pains me when I build mines in the other African countries and also here at home in South Africa, that you find that the, the, the model that we inherit from the Western world, exploit, explore, ex, explore e, e, and ex, export, and leave gold towns. So they exploit the minerals, they explore after doing exploration, they then export it outside, outside and they leave gold towns. And what we need to do as economic activists, we've got to become agents of transformation, pioneers of change, and embrace the activism that is going to say, not in my world, not under my time, not in my time. I owned a company called Shaft Sinkers, which was the number one producer of mines in the world, going as far as six, four, nearly 4,000 meters to dig the gold the number one staff sinking company. When Anglo went offshore listing, they sold it to me. But I started as a contract miner in Macau mining contracts, building mines for the big mining companies before I became an owner. But what I was not prepared to do is to own a, mine, a company that went offshore listing and the, and, the, and the primary listing is offshore and the secondary listing is in South Africa. If you are going to be a capitalist in, in the African continent and you want to just have all your primary listing offshore, what you do, you take the wealth of your country and you let the offshore country own it. So this company went offshore listing and I said, no, I'm going to sell my shares. I could not under my, in my lifetime embrace the fact that I'm now going to turn my back on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. And I'm telling to the world, here I am as an African producer of minerals. I do not belong be, or believe, or maybe in, in the stock exchange in JSE, or even going to Mauritius or somewhere else in Africa. So it starts with us. And secondly, something else that I was not prepared to do. I then realized that a lot of the mining companies, or maybe not mining companies, but mining companies mainly that have a primary listing offshore, not companies like, you know, that have a primary listing in South Africa, the Anglo Gold Ashantis, the Impala Platinum, and many of those companies, Arm and all those, that have a primary listing offshore. They're not guilty. But when I looked at what we're doing in the industry, and beyond the industry, I also looked at what, we are mani what the manufacturers are doing, manufacturers of, uh, of, 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 of bags, of clothes, whatever. What we do in the mining industry, we own a mine. And then by virtue of owning the mine, we then have to mark the ore that we produce and extract. So we then we list that company, that which is the marketing company that belongs to my mine that I own in the offshore list uh, tax haven. And when I sell the commodity that I extract to myself, if maybe the cost of that commodity is $1,000 per ton, I then sell it to myself for $500 per ton. Then I'll go to the, to the, to, to the, to, to the Minister uh, of, of Finance and, 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 and I say to the tax man, I cannot pay tax because I'm not getting an income. And then my cost of production is so much and I'm losing money. And then I show a balance sheet that's negative. So I looked at also the Global Financial Integrity, which is a New York-based organization that, has the, that does this kind of investigation in terms of taxation. And they actually exposed in the findings that in 2012, 174 billion was not even paid in mining, mining uh, 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 exploitation of the ore. And then I said, no, man, come on, not in my lifetime. And as the, as the president of the junior mining chamber at that time, South African Mining Development Association, I then went to parliament 
and very <laughs> controversially though, because I'm supposed to not say I want to pay tax. The money is going to go into my pocket. So I said uh, to Parliament, taxation is not being paid. And they looked at me as if, hey man, am I hitting at the white man? I said, uh, -uh. the white companies that belong, that companies, Anglo Gold, Ashanti, Impala, Platinum, and all these companies are white owned. And, you know, and they pay in tax. So I'm talking about companies that have a prime listing mainly offshore because they're not under the jurisdiction of the Reserve Bank and, and our financial uh, 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 rules and regulations. So then I said, we need to look and look into this non taxation payment. And I say to the Minister of Transport, in your budget speech, you will need us so many billion. Do you know we didn't, we didn't need to have any toll gates if we had the billions? Minister of, 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 of Lights, of, of Public Enterprise, who ESCOM is under you. In your, in your, in your budget, you need us so many billions. We, load shedding should not have happened. Minister of Education, I went to your budget speech. You need us so many billions. Fees should not fall. Why are we having kids demanding free education in South Africa? Fees are falling, fees must fall, they say. Let the fees fall, the fees are too high. And there was a fees must fall uh, demonstration in the country and the universities were closed and our kids were crying. And then I said, this is the kind of money that has not been paid. And then I said, in Australia, the Australian tax office are charging at that time of uh, BHV Bulletin Rio Tinto that, that, that were in also in, 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 in contravening the, 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 the taxation rules and regulations at that time. So there was a court case at that time. So they had a look at it. So fortunately, our parliament listened. Our portfolio committee listened. It was a joint committee of trade and industry, of, of finance, of mining, and, on, and environment. So they sat there and I made a presentation. I was very lucky. Our minister at that time of trade and industry and our minister of, of mines and our minister of finance were very eager to listen. And the Judge Dennis Davis Commission was then created. And Judge Dennis Davis Commission was created to look at illicit capital and, and transfer pricing. And then President Tawin Becky, fortunately, took it to the African Union. And there's that committee that is existing that he's chairing. Now, I'm just saying, we need those economic activists, agents of transformation, pioneers of change that would say, not in my lifetime. Wow. I will not have this happen. And if you can have that in Africa, then the rest is king. I'm happy we have PUP. We have to look at the free trade agreements. We have to look at, I, I was in my role as the ambassador. I already advised the president but with the Bureau and the, 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 the committee members, we need to have this workshop here and then go and have regional workshops and have, look, have a look at, first of all, also over and above what the areas, what the, what the countries have. We must have a look at the law. We have in South Africa Section 26. Section 26 in the Mining Act says, I'm just going to just, uh, just be brief. You are the owner of a mine, and whoever you are selling your minerals to, that producer who's going to take the minerals to produce whatever it is, must then consult the Minister of Mines and the Minister of Trade and Industry. And if that is being done, then the Minister of Mines and the Minister of Trade and Industry can ask, what are you going to do with my, with my, with my, with my, with my platinum? Oh, I'm going to turn, turn it into, uh, use it for catalytic converters for the engine of the cars. Okay? And then the minister will say, but okay, where are you having your, your factory? I'm having in this country, then what, why? Do you know we've got special economic zones in South Africa? Why can't you have it here? So those are the things that we can do and learn and share from each other. So these are the, 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 these are the active, uh, legal, legislative uh, areas that I want to look at because I'm very much in and out of parliament. I'm a producer of minerals, I'm not a parliamentarian, but I spend so much time in parliament when I see things are not going right. And I don't do it alone, I do it also with my chamber members. And I was also at that one time the chairperson of the Black Business Council, and you know, I'll also go as a voice of many, not as my voice alone. So you go as the voice of, con of a confederation and you talk, and organized labor, organized business, civil society is part of that voice. And then what we do is then we look into it, and then we have so many factories. If every producer that gets the mineral from us 
in Africa. I've been asked, why are you producing that mineral there? We have a tax haven that we can create for you. And if we don't have it, we can create it. So these are the areas that I want to discuss in the regions and say, what can we do? Let us join the efforts. And why is it that whole uh, uh, cars are being locally assembled in South Africa? Why is it that we cannot, the local assembly, also share with other countries? So we look at which country is rich with, with, with iron ore or whatever it is, and then let them come, the nuts and bolts, whatever, the steel, whatever that we need for the car. Let all those countries also have the factories. So this is the integrated resources development model that I would like to advocate in the African continent. We need to leave a legacy for our children behind. The Mandelas, Mugabes, the Kaundas, and, and Nyereres, they helped on the political liberation. What are we doing with our economic liberation? There's so much money that you can make. And make it right while the, while the world, while the African continent can also make. Why is it that I go and mine in a rural area and the rural community does not have a community trust? One of the mines I own, Morula Platinum, the communities are earning 7% and they get in the community trust. Six tribes are earning seven percent of a company that makes that produces platinum, and just now we're going to give lots of royalties, and not royalties, the dividends, and the dividends in the multi millions to the communities. The community trust then has the trust deed. The trust deed says every dividend that comes is not to be shared or, or enjoyed by the rural, rural family, royal family only. No, it goes into the, 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 the investment into roads, into a clinic for the tribe, and whatever it is that the tribe needs. Maybe uh, uh, seeds for plowing, maybe tractors for the farmers, you know, and that's how you get the people on board. When you talk to me about mining, I can go on and on and on. I know, but this was so powerful. <laughs> Thank you.